next speaker, uh, Syed Karim, uh, KD9GII. He's the founder of OtherNet, a company which offers free broadcast data service. Syed KD9GI received his license in, at the 2016 Hamvention in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, his interest, is in amateur, interest in amateur radio is directly related to provided, providing a universally accessible broad, broadcast data service. Wow, suddenly I'm tongue tied. Uh, OtherNet operates a free to receive satellite data cast, which can be accessed over two geostationary satellites in North America and Europe, SES2 and Astra 3B. The company designs and manufactures low cost portable data radios, which can receive a 12 gigahertz signal without uh, the aid of a dish. The wideband 85 megahertz to 6,000 megahertz, to six gig data radio, known as a dream catcher, can also be used by hams to send and receive text messages over, over terrestrial links. This presentation will discuss the existing APRS relay system over commercial geostationary satellites, terrestrial chat application through a purely digital device, and the future of broadcast data and file caching from satellites. Uh, so please welcome Kareem. You're on. All right, great. So I'll uh, go ahead and uh, share my screen and start things off. And um, just before I do that, uh, for the audience, um, uh, I uh, have, uh, encourage anyone to um, uh, ask questions, and I'll, I'm happy to respond um, throughout the uh, uh, presentation. Uh, by no means does this have to be kind of a kind of a lecture. Um, and I guess um, all the questions just come through Scott and you can ask me, and then I'm happy to respond in that way. All right. Um, so let's see. Where do we go? Here we go. Okay. So um, other nets. Uh, I'll uh, the kind of the, the format of the, the talk is I'll give a little description about what the company does, um, how it works um, from a general perspective, and then we'll go into a little bit more details about um, kind of the, the, the technical uh, requirements of what's required, uh, what is necessary to be able to uplink and downlink. Um, there'll be some short talk about um, APRS and how uh, we take the APRS um, feed that is generated from um, uh, messages get relayed over the internet and then we broadcast everything. And then will be um, the last slide that talks about um, really more of a discussion starter um, about um, what uh, the uh, region two has, is it region two or is it region three? It's um, um, Africa and North uh, um, uh, in Europe uh, for QO100. Um, and if there's um, any kind of uh, 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 reason why there shouldn't be um, a a, a commercial variant um, um, using commercial uh, capacity to be able to do something similar in, in North America. Um, okay, so uh, moving forward, um, let's see. Why can't this? There we go. So other net um, what we provide is file delivery without the internet. We broadcast data, data over existing um, commercial KU band capacity. Um, we can operate off of any any band. Um, it just happens to be that KU band is the easiest to work with, um, and um, and also cheapest. Um, the and the reason for that is because KU band is used for television, and there are lots of TV satellite TV receivers, which brings down the prices uh, for the types of receivers that we use. Um, it also brings down the prices for the capacity um, that is leased from uh, geostationary operators. Uh, we currently lease capacity from SES. Um, we use um, SES2 over North America, which is at, I believe, 87 degrees. Um, so if you're anywhere in the Midwest, you're basically pointing due south. And then Astra 3B in um, uh, Europe, uh, and I forget exactly what the, uh, the coordinates are for that one. Um, uh, the Generally speaking, what we're doing is uh, providing some kind of a uh, a shortwave-like service in that it's accessible to large, huge swaths of the of the globe, um, but with a digital twist. Um, so, you know, being that it's file delivery, you know, kind of the one way to think about what we do is shortwave meets BitTorrent um, from space. Um, the goal um, of what uh, 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 what we do, um, I started the company about five years ago, uh, and really what I want to do is provide um, a uh, uh, an information service, really like a, a digital library service that was accessible in even the most remote areas um, in places that um, may have really constrained networks or no network connectivity at all, 
And so what we can do is, you know, provide the really valuable information that's normally only found on the internet and just broadcast it, and make it available to everyone uh, to cheap receivers. So the way that the system works is we uplink um, from uh, from the ground anywhere within the satellite's footprint. Um, we, as of right now, we uplink through SES's um, teleport. Now, teleport is just a data center um, that has a large antenna. Actually, the antennas um, don't even need to be that large. We, I think, we're up, uh, coming up from a five-meter antenna, but we can easily come up from a sixty-centimeter um, antenna. So we go up from a, um, a, uh, a ground, uh, an earth station. It bounces off the satellite and comes, and basically, you know, and it's it's just a bent pipe. Anything that comes back down, uh, gets sent up, comes back down, but it's frequency uh, converted um, uh, to a from 15 gigahertz down to about 12 gig, um, and that is received by an LNB. Um, the uh, LNB down converts from 12 gig to about to somewhere in L band between 900 megahertz and you know uh, 1500 uh, megahertz or so. Um, and then uh, uh, from the LMB goes into the, the radio itself. Um, uh, the, uh, the device uh, 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 takes the carrier, um, turns it into packets, and then the packets um, get reconstructed into files. And uh, there's a, 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 the box or the receiver is running Linux, and you, it has a, uh, a GUI that's accessed over Wi-Fi. So um, to simplify all of that, uh, the the receiver acts as a Wi-Fi access point. It is constantly downloading content um, and makes it accessible over Wi-Fi. So any kind of a Wi-Fi device, whether it's a tablet um, or a phone or an old PC, can access wherever content is stored um, over the uh, uh, the receiver. So um, the as I mentioned before, the goal is to be able to provide a, a universally accessible uh, information service. Um, we want to be able to make the receivers as cheap as possible. Um, and the way that we found to be able to do that is, is use um, components that are mass market for other purposes and try to uh, repurpose them specifically for this for a satellite use case. Um, and the reason for satellites is um, it's actually a lot cheaper to um, run a geostation or lease a slice of uh, geo bandwidth than it is to um, uh, pay for or lease um, shortwave. Um, so shortwave or DRM, um, was initially reviewed in depth, um, but it's just uh, because you, get, you have to pay for all that electricity, um, it's just a lot cheaper to, to use um, geo bandwidth uh, to cover the uh, same amount of area or similar amounts of area. Um, the, and then as far as uh, what we have right now, um, we uh, have a essentially what it amounts to is an evaluation board, allows um, you know, any kind of customer to be able to take it and to test the service um, across North America and Europe. Uh, and then and there are very, very you know, limited numbers of customers who say, oh, okay, well, now I want to have you know, 1,000, 2,000, or 3,000 of these, and I want to deploy them in Southern Africa or you know, Southeast Asia or wherever it ends up being. And so that's kind of the approach that we take is have a semi, um, a, basically a, a hackable version um, of the receiver um, so that it can get customized later on. So um, on this page, you'll see um, basically, I hope uh, Scott can, is my cursor in view? Yeah. It is to me, and yes, it is on yeah. the stream as well. Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so then um, you see over here, this is a, a Dreamcatcher, um, and this is just a standard KU band uh, satellite TV LNB. These things cost like a dollar, two dollars, or something like that. Um, yeah, of course, when you buy ten thousand at a time, um, or you know, when uh, you just buy it off the internet, that's like five or ten bucks. Um, uh, there are a couple of ones that have better um, stability, um, and those are the ones that we recommend and we also resell. Uh, but all it's doing, you see, this does not have a dish. Um, normally, you would have a 60 centimeter antenna that's coming down. If you was a direct TV um, dish, maybe it's a little bit smaller, 45 centimeters or so. But this has no um, uh, no dish associated with it, and it's re receiving an 800 kilohertz carrier um, in Chicago. And the reason for this, it's effectively this is just a you know obviously it's a Tupperware bin or whatever. Um, it's just there to keep that the weather out. Um, this was running in Chicago on the top of a uh, what is it, a shipping container for about a year and a half or so without, you know, uh, stopping. Um, uh, what happens here is uh, that L band gets fed into here. There's a down, there's another um, down conversion that happens over here to be able to get exactly to the 2.4 gigahertz of a, the effectively the modem. Um, and then from there, um, we have, there's an SOC. Oh, we'll, we'll go over here. Here's the SOC um, that runs Linux. 
And um, right over here, oh, this particular one does not have Wi-Fi. Well, there's a Wi-Fi dongle that goes over here, it creates the access point. Um, on this side, this is a little bit different. We had a particular customer um, who wanted an even smaller receiver. Um, and so you can see right here is a single element patch antenna. Um, it's KU band, uh, goes into the LMB over here. This is our own design. And then of course the same thing happens. It gets fed in here. Um, uh, this, this carrier is demodulated and um, files are just stored on this uh, uh, SD card right over here um, as they come down. So um, we've operated the KU band service for coming up on two years, I think right now. Um, we have a lot of our customers, a lot of our customers end up being um, uh, hams um, and they of course love fiddling with um, the front end. Um, you can see lots of them uh, trying to eke out a little bit more gain. So this is, this right up here, an LNB by itself, this is about 13 dBi of gain. Um, and that is in some places across the country, it's right at the edge of uh, the, the, the SNR requirement to demodulate. Um, and so something like this um, or this one, I think this is probably the most performance of the homemade um, uh, waveguide or horn extenders. Um, I think this one gives about five dBi uh, of additional gain and something like this is about four, four. And I, if I remember right, this is about three. Um, uh, and then of course, these are some other um, uh, antennas. This is a, a uh, a four by four antenna with an integrated LNB. Uh, this, I think, if I remember right, is about 16 dBi of gain. So it's only about three dB better over here. This one is a more recent one. Um, and this is, I think, 18 dBi. So this one is equivalent to something like this over here. Um, and so this is just kind of shows um, some of the things that can be done rather than having a, uh, a horn um, antenna, you can also go to a patch array. So um, we're getting a little bit more technical now. That's, that's essentially what we do is we broadcast data. Um, um, we have a, to get up to the satellite, we have a UDP stream and it comes back down and those, that stream is uh, taken apart and uh, turned into files and then accessed over Wi-Fi. Um, another way to look at it, if you are any way affiliated with the, the satellite industry is what we're doing is we're creating them because um, the devices are portable, they're very small antennas. We're creating a modable satellite service, uh, but we're using fixed satellite service uh, capacity. Um, so the, the, the mobile satellite service is generally regarded as L-band. So Iridium, Inmarsat, um, uh, Light Squared, uh, there's a very limited amount of, of bandwidth. There's like 30 megahertz of bandwidth that's a, uh, uh, access, uh, uh, accessible um, over uh, mobile satellite services. Whereas FSS, uh, fixed satellite service, that's what all the um, uh, VSAT uh, services use, as well as uh, satellite TV, there's about 500 megahertz that's available. And there's also a lot more operators um, who have geostationary satellites that um, uh, uh, use that capacity. So um, one of the things that we got clever with is say, hey, you know what, why don't we use some kind of, uh, uh, of uh, modulation uh, that can deal with all of the co-channel interference with all these other satellites. They're also using the same capacity or uh, spectrum over and over again. Um, so that we can use, so that we're not reliant on expensive L-band, and instead we can, you know, um, uh, create a similar type of service, but use much, much cheaper um, KU band. Um, so effectively, what we're trying to do is get away from this um, and have something like this, or even smaller, as you've seen with the the little uh, um, uh, single element patch antenna. Um, of course, there's a trade over here. So over here, you get TV. Um, you get uh, uh, from a transponder, like say 100 megabits per second. Um, and of course, you know, with our carrier, we're getting, you know, 10 kilobits per second. Um, grand, now granted over here, um, they're using an entire transponder. We're only using about one megahertz, but still um, we're using the trader that we're doing by um, uh, going down to a small antenna is we're using our spectrum very, very inefficiently. Um, spectral efficiency, efficiency is, you know, uh, uh, instead of getting, let's say three bits per hertz, we're getting like a 10th if I remember right, a tenth of a bit per hertz, maybe even less than that. Um, so a little bit more about the uh, Dreamcatcher um, uh, itself. So it is a uh, uh, it's a spread spectrum uh, data radio. It uses a, um, a an IC from from uh, Semtech. It's the LoRa um, SX twelve eighty one, and the LoRa um, modulation is effectively FM. Uh, spread spectrum. Um, uh, it just it does a lot of chirping. Um, it's similar to conceptually similar to what uh, Joe Taylor does on uh, with Whisper, 
Um, the only difference here is that um, you know we get to buy a modem for three bucks, and then of course it's not the exact same frequency we want, so we use a frequency translator in the middle. It's a it's a, a chip from Corbo uh, that allows us to go from 30 megahertz to six gig um, on a single device. Um, so, and of course this this is relevant uh, to everyone here because there are a lot of bands in there uh, that you can use for terrestrial comms. Um, and, and to use a Dreamcatcher to be able to do that, to be able to, to have duplex radio. So you can you know, send and receive, just not simultaneously. And um, the benefit is you can have these small antennas um, or go maybe a little bit farther out than you would normally um, because you know, we can demodulate with that uh, with uh, using lower modulation um, down to minus 20 dB of SNR. So um, it's not quite as good as uh, Whisper with I think minus 32, 36. Um, but still, that's uh, that's a lot of coding gain and um, allows us to pull a uh, signal from from the, the from below the noise floor. So, um, kind of rehashing what was uh, talked about a little bit uh, earlier, but this is getting more into the details and how the kind of the network works. Is um, on the downlink, we're not using a a a, a dish which is provides thirty six dBi of gain. Instead, what we're doing is we're using just the LNB by itself, which is about you know nine to twelve dBi. Um, the, the carrier is spread spectrum and therefore it's using the same, um, uh, the same bit is getting chirped multiple times. And then, you know, through lots of math, it's getting turned into a bit later on down the road. Um, this allows us to be able to receive, um, by one, uh, one centimeter antenna. Now, one thing that keep in mind here is, um, uh, the reason why all of these, uh, satellites, these satellite TV services, um, and also over QO 100, they're using dishes. Um, in is no, yes, obviously there is a, um, uh, uh, a gain requirement, um, but on the, on the commercial side, uh, especially is every two degrees over across the geostationary arc, there is another satellite that is using the exact same frequency. And so the smaller you make your receiver antenna, the more of those satellites you see. And so, um, 60 centimeters or about 33 dB, um, is about roughly, um, these are really, really rough figures, um, about two degrees of beam width. And so the more you reduce the size of your antenna, the more of those satellites you're seeing, and then that's another coach uh, interferer in your, uh, uh, in your frequency. And so um, the reason for using a spread spectrum carrier is, is uh, not just because it's a cheap radio, um, uh, but it's also because it allows us to get the, the uh, antenna down as small as possible. Um, and to make this a portable and a cheaper service, a cheaper product. Um, the right now with the with with just the L, just the LMBs gain, we're probably seeing on the order of twenty different um, geostationary satellites all transmitting at the same frequency. So a bunch of co-channel interference in there. Um, and of course, if you go down to a one centimeter patch antenna, you're seeing the entire sky um, with not just uh, uh, interferers from from all of the geostationary arc, uh, but also terrestrial um, uh, KU band uh, interference because there are some uh, commercial bands that are available for, I think it's uh, um, uh, um, cross-linking that the commercial, uh, some of the commercial guys use. Um, as far as uh, uplinking go, and this is gonna be related to the last slide about, hey, you know, why not, why, why doesn't the, the ham community, um, while the funds are being used to be able to have something like QO100, use uh, commercial capacity. Uh, um, and this is, has to do with the uplinking, not just the downlinking. So the uplinking is, um, if you have so much processing gain, um, you can get away with having a really low powered uh, block up converter or power amplifier to be able to talk to the, or to relay off of the, the bent pipe. Um, so um, th there is something to keep in mind um, on when it comes to uplinking is that you have to make sure that you are um, uh, pointed at the correct satellite, otherwise there will be hell to pay by someone. Um, and so uh, one of the benefits to having, um, uh, depending on all of the processing gain is that you're not gonna cause a lot of inter interference um, if you're mispointed a little bit. Um, you can, it, we've actually been able to uplink, you know, with not just one watt um, down to, I think the lowest was like 50 milliwatts um, and bouncing it off, but using a, a higher, a larger dish. Um, and so that the, the advantage of that is just being um, uh, is having a, a low uplink, uh, having low cost gear for uplinking. Um, and then if there are lots of people who are going to be uplinking, um, also ensuring uh, to the to the commercial satellite operator that um, there's not going to be a lot of uh, uh, interference 
um, on their other frequencies as well as to their their peers, some at different um, uh, at adjacent slots. So um, one of the reasons uh, that this is probably important to some people here is uh, because of this right here. It's, it's in addition to that providing an information service. It's we also want to be able to be a backup in times when the terrestrial networks to go to get down uh, or get um, destroyed or offline. And um, you know the beauty of satellites is that uh, they're basically always there and they mostly always work. Um, and so uh, you know what. what we, we've mostly uh, focused on, you know, providing commercial service, uh, but, um, you know, of course, this is very much in line with what a lot of hams do is to provide a backup during times when the terrestrial networks do go down or, or disasters uh, and emergency relief. Um, so this, this is all something that probably everyone here is familiar with, uh, providing, you know, redundant and augmented system. Um, we can talk more about that as far as Q&A goes uh, a little bit later. Uh, this is kind of self-explanatory. Um, uh, Segueing so into um, what's relevant um, to what we're doing for for amateur radio enthusiasts is that um, we act as a uh, relay uh, for all of APRS. So if you're making a if you're if you're creating a message um, and you include the either outnet or other, um, you can see from this sheet that everyone's using outnet. I think there may be a bug that maybe others not work other is not working as well, but. In any case, um, it should be it should be those two um, tags. And what happens is uh, that once your message is captured by any um, gateway, um, then it gets relayed. Um, we we grab it from there and we relay it over our uh, both the European and the North American beads. Um, and this is the this is the interface um, of the uh, the receiver. Um, uh, and you can see specifically this is for the messages or APRS messages, and that's what you know people are sending. Uh, I'm not entirely sure um, why people uh, are using it, um, but uh, I mean, hey, that's actually one of the things we're still trying to figure out is um, use the utility and usefulness um, of, of providing these kinds of services. And um, there are quite a few people who are using it for, for APRS. So the last um, last point of discussion, I, and I hope there's a little bit more back and forth um, this um, after after I'm done talking, is, you know, in Q100 um, was subsidized by by someone who had a lot of money um, and was willing to, to pay for the cost of the payload as well as the hosted payload on the geostationary satellite. Um, from what I uh, have heard, it was about $4 million. I know that, um, I think it was Mitsubishi Electric who, that made the payload. They quoted about roughly $2 million for the payload by itself to me. Um, and uh, naturally, you know, that's that's the, to put the transponder, uh, to build the transponder, and then you need to make sure that you're paying the person who owns the satellites to be able to host it. I believe that's that the going rate, the going commercial rate for that is, is about $2 million. So you need about $4 million to be able to have something equivalent to um, uh, uh, Oscar 100. Well, um, that's a lot of money, and uh, without having a benefactor, it may take some time to build fundraising for that. What's possible to do in the meantime um, is just to take commercial capacity. You know, a geocapacity, one megahertz of geocapacity, um, which you can do a whole lot with, uh, is, you know, it's, it's actually a lot less than $50,000 per year if you wanted it to be. Um, so uh, if there is some way to be able to, through donations, fund, you know, a lease of that commercial capacity, everyone could go ahead and share on um, that one megahertz. Um, and uh, there will be some convincing um, to the, 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 the satellite um, owner um, that you won't cause or that everyone won't cause some interference. Um, I think that can be worked around. Uh, but um, in the near term, while the $4 million for to be able to use the, the dedicated um, ham band um, is being you know, raised, um, this is one way to be able to operate an equivalent service um, just off of you know, bandwidth that it has to be paid for. Now, the thing to point out is I know that uh, we're probably all born to paying for spectrum or uh, use of, of, of spectrum when it's available you know, uh, for free. But the reality is, is that it's not really free because you have, to, you have to pay for the transponder to be able to get up there. And it's actually more expensive. What the, uh, if, if, if you amortize $4 million over, over a period of 15 years, that's more expensive than just paying for a megahertz from commercial capacity. So um, uh, with that, I'll, I'll conclude you know, my, uh, my rant um, and um, happy to take any questions about any of this uh, from, from anyone. Thank you very much. I have a bunch of questions, but I don't get to ask them. So, uh, 
Hey, uh, I do have one question from uh, from YouTube that says, uh, uh, if a friend wants a wiki document, how do I request that that, that be queued for the network? I tried last week, but it wasn't working. So at that particular feature, we had a feature where um, anyone could go ahead and upload whatever they wanted. Um, and this was a few years ago. We There's been um, some changes. We're bringing back that feature where basically it's like a Dropbox. You put things into a, 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 an online folder and it'll just wait its time and get eventually get uploaded. Uh, it, so to answer your question, you can't do it now. Just give us until the end of the summer and you'll, that feature will be back. Very cool. All right, um, we are almost out of time anyway. So if you're willing to hang out in our breakout room, yep. then uh, we I'm sure people can go over there and ask you lots of questions. Is that, good. You, you have the link for that and everything? You're good to go? Um, I Is the link in the email or is it somewhere yes. else? Yes. It be is the, the email. Same okay. email. Same email. All right. I do have one more question for you, it looks like. Sure. It says, uh, are there tools available to determine how much antenna gain is required for my, at my lat lawn? For receive? Uh, yeah, probably at least receive, right? Um, no, there's not a great tool. Um, yeah, you know, I'd, I'd like to answer that question in more detail. Um, if, if I'm running out of time, um, I, I mean, the, the short of it is that if you're in North America um, in the lower 48, then you know the system was kind of designed where it should receive without any issue. Um, if it doesn't work, then, I mean, we don't have any kind of tools that will say you need exactly this amount because there are actually a lot of variables that are involved, um, mm -hmm. and margin and all that kind of stuff. So I'll just answer the question with no, there isn't a, a tool that I can point you to. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Syed. Um, we're going to, uh, move on to the next one here shortly. And, uh, hopefully everyone that uh, is interested has more questions. I can't imagine. There have to be more questions. Uh, we'll go ahead and catch up with you in the chat room. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you.